What is the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Join Kenneth Copeland today on the Believer's Voice of Victory as he shares foundational truths from the Bible that help us to understand more. Be assured of God's presence and take Jesus at His Word. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Father, thank you today. We give you praise and we honor you for your presence. Greater is He that is in us than he that is in the world. And we boldly declare that the greater one is helping us today, giving us revelation from heaven. And we thank you and we praise you for it. In Jesus' name we pray and we receive. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, welcome to the broadcast today. Let's, let's go back over to Mark 11, 23 and 24. Jesus said for verily, well, in the 22nd verse, remember, he said, have the faith of God. For verily I say unto you, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, so any whosoever can use faith. How, well, how do you get faith? You accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Amen. Now, let me point this out to you because we're going somewhere with this today. In the 10th chapter of Romans, if you shall confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Now then, do you know that you know do you have that inward witness inside you? Yes, Brother Copeland, I'm a child of God. I'm born of God. If something were to happen to you right now, it did something happen and you just died right now, or you know in your heart you'd go to heaven. Well, I'm not quite sure. Now, all right, let's just take care of it. Do you believe, do you believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. Do you believe that? Yes, I do. Well, if you believe that in your heart and you just say, Jesus, come into my heart, I confess you. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior right now. Amen. Now, do I have the Holy Spirit? Yes, you do. You haven't been baptized with the Holy Spirit, but He is in there. The greater one is inside you and He's your teacher. You have the fruit of the Spirit listed in the fifth chapter of the book of Galatians. Love, joy, peace, goodness, meekness, kindness, temperance. You, you have, th these are in there. Now, the baptism with the Holy Spirit is the fullness being filled with the Spirit of God. Amen. Speaking with other tongues. Now, this is important. Jesus, well, I'm telling you what. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. What? Oh, yeah, sir. Uh, let's, let's go over here at the 14th chapter of the book of John. And I want you to see something here. <clears throat> Verse 16, I will pray the Father, and He will give you another comforter, that He may abide with you forever. Now, Jesus is talking. He, he's talking to the 12 disciples. He's talking to... Um, He's talking to his people right here. Thank you, Lord. Even the spirit of truth, listen now, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knows him, but you know him for he dwells with you, and he shall be in you. Now, 
at this time, they knew, they, they knew the Spirit of God because they knew Jesus. And he was dwelling with them because Jesus is, is anointed of the Spirit of God. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, and so forth. Now, he, Jesus, at that time, they were with him. They were ministering under his anointing, and the Spirit of God was working with them. They knew him. They, 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 Jesus said right here, in the 10th verse, Believest thou not that I'm in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwells within me, he does the work. Now, so that, and they watched the Spirit of God do the work. So they knew him. He said, now let's, let's go back and, and look at this again. Even I will pray the Father, he'll give you another comforter. Jesus was their comforter. And he will give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not, neither knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and shall be in you. Now, nobody could get born again until after Jesus went to the cross until after he was raised from the dead. So, now notice this. The world can't receive him. They don't know him, and they can't see him. So the Holy Spirit is not God's gift to the world. No, no. No, no, no. Jesus is God's gift to the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The Holy Spirit is God's power. God himself gift to the church for in, the endowment of power to minister supernaturally, to live supernaturally and, begin, and to be uh, uh, by him be able to, to pray in the spirit, to go beyond your natural understanding and believe you receive and pray. The, 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 he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaks not unto men, but unto God. Speaks not unto men, but unto God. How be it in the spirit he speaks mysteries they're, they're mysteries. One translation says divine secrets known only between you and God. See, it, and the, the devil can't even get in there. But we just read in Mark eleven twenty four. 24, <clears throat> therefore whatsoever thing you desire when you pray, when you pray, when you pray. He didn't, he didn't say just when you pray, when you understand what you're saying. Let's go back over there and then. Don't, don't lose your place there. And in the 14th chapter of 1 Corinthians, if I pray in an unknown tongue, 14th verse, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? I will pray with the spirit. I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the spirit. I will sing with the understanding also. I will. I, it's an act of my will. It's not some act of ecstasy or anything. It's by my will. I can, I can pray in my understanding at time I want to. Father, I just praise you and thank you. He said, I will. I will pray with my understanding. But I'm back at it. My, my, I will pray with my spirit. I pray and when I pray, uh, when, when I, let's go back. And, if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays. Then he said, I will pray with the spirit. I will pray with the understanding. I will sing with the Spirit. I will sing with my understanding. It's an act of my will. So, <clears throat> now, thank you, Lord. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. Um, <clears throat> let's look. <laughs> okay. 
Let's go to the book of Acts and let's look at what Jesus said here in the uh, Acts of the Apostles in verse 8 of chapter 1. You shall receive power. The Greek word dunamis. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall be witnesses, supernatural witnesses, unto me both in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Well, Brother Copeland, I heard all that passed away. Well, you heard something that wasn't true. So, and, and is it for all believers? Yeah, all believers all for all time. Let's go back to the last chapter of the book of Mark. We started off in the 11th chapter, go to the 16th chapter. Jesus said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be damned or condemned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Every believer in my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They'll take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it'll not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. It is for every believer. Amen. So here is not only a supernatural way to communicate with God, but a supernatural way to minister to other people. This is talking about believers. This is not talking about the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. No. I mean, all of us are believers. Uh, I stand in the office of the prophet and teacher. Well, I'm a believer first. Amen. So I, I, I just, I just work here. You understand? <laughs> Amen. But this, the Spirit of God is for every person. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Just like we talked there a while ago. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. And I, I'm, I know by faith, I know I'm born again. I know I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. Now, I'm a candidate to receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit, and I take your word for it. All right, let's see what his word is for it. Let's go over to the book of Luke in the 11th chapter. And let's look here in in the... 13th verse, if you then being evil or you're you're just natural men know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? Ask and believe you receive. See, that's that's what Jesus said. Whatsoever thing you desire. I desire to be filled with overflowing with the Spirit of the living God and receive power I desire the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I'm asking, and you said it, Jesus, I believe I receive it. Well, now, Brother Copeland, you know, I've heard, I'm, and particularly back when, when Gloria and I first came into this, we, both of us, we got born again in, in 1962. And, and then in January 63, both of us received the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Well, we, we were scriptural illiterates. We, and and uh, we, God just blessed us and, and people prayed with us and prayed for us and so forth. And, and thank God we received. But now I heard all the stories. I'm, and I've, I've heard people say, well, I've had people say this to me. Uh, Brother Kenneth, you know, I, uh, I just, I don't want to be getting them. I, I, I don't want to be getting the wrong spirit here. I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm praying. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm asking to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. I, I, but I don't, I, I don't want to. I don't want to be getting the wrong spirit. Let me ask you again: Are you a child of God? Yeah. You know that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I know it in my heart. Okay. Let's look at something here. In the tenth chapter of. Luke's gospel. Let's 
in the 19th verse. Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. I want you to notice serpents and scorpions. Okay, now, back to the 11th chapter where we were. Verse 11, if a son, are you a child of God? Okay. If a son shall ask bread of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give for a fish, give him a serpent, an evil spirit? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? Of course not. But I want you to notice that he's referring to evil spirits. Amen. So if you're a child of God and you come to him and you say, I'm asking you for the Holy Spirit, there is no way the devil can cross that line and get inside you. You just put that out of your heart and mind and have no fear. Now, it's a very dangerous thing to take somebody that's not born again and, 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 and start trying to get them baptized in the Holy Ghost because, listen, I, I mean, hey, they can very easily get the wrong thing. It's a very dangerous thing to do. You don't do that. If you're going to be ministering to somebody to receive the Holy Spirit, you find out first they're born again. And, and if you ask them just like I ask you. Are, are you sure in your heart that you know Jesus as your Savior? Well, I'm not sure. Well, make sure. And well, no, you know, I've, I've no, uh, Brother Copeland, I, I'm, no, I've, I've never accepted Jesus as my Lord. Well, let's don't start with the Holy Spirit. Let's start with God's gift to you, Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah. Can you see? It? Now then, it's not a matter of how you feel about it. It's a matter of taking Jesus at his word. The feelings will come. Well, I, you know, I just, when I'm just, I'm, the, I'm just, I'm speaking in this language, but I, you know, I don't, I don't feel like it's doing anything. I mean, you can be just as dry. You don't have to feel something to be in faith. I believe it because I, 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 I know this. You remember I told you last week about the, the uh, experience that I had you know, I, I just all you have to do is just read right there, um, verse four, fourteenth chapter of First Corinthians. He that speaks an unknown tongue edifies himself, and so or builds himself up. And so I said, well, I'm just going to pray in tongues all the way from from Lubbock to Tulsa, and um, I'm you know I've never done this before. I'm just I'm just going to do it, and I'm just. I'm just praying, driving down the highway. And my mind had kind of drift away. And I was like, I'm not telling you Well, it, it, it will quiet in your mind. But you can continue to pray in tongues, be thinking about something else. Well, it isn't doing any. Yeah, oh yeah. See, it's your spirit praying, not your head. So I'm just praying. And I got home after that whole long trip there. And I forgot what it was, a couple of hours, whatever it was. And um, I got home and I thought, well, if I'm edified, I can't tell it. But, you know, the Word of God said I'm edified, so I'm edified. Well, it, it, it wasn't edifying my body. But then we went to prayer group that night where Tommy Tyson was speaking in that prayer group. And, and he, he taught on, on the name of Jesus and, 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 um, and, and some other things. And he got through, he said, Any, anyone in here, it, it was quite a large home and a number of people in there and, uh, that need healing. And several people raised their hand. Well, there was a woman right there, uh, right in one row close to us. And, and Tommy said, uh, Kenneth, you and Gloria lay hands on her. I said, sure. And so, and then Gloria and I prayed for her. 
man, when I laid hands on her, here it came, just come up on the inside of me, the power of God, hallelujah. And then's when the edification hit me, <laughs> hallelujah. When I prayed for her and, and my, now my spirit's in action. It had been building up. It had been building up all day. It had been building up. And then the moment I released that by faith and, and began to minister or, or, or began to re, re, a, get into spiritual activity, my spirit was, was primed and, re, and rested and ready. Praise God. And a great thing happened. I wanted to point out to you, when you're receiving the Holy Spirit, you don't have to feel anything. You're going to. You don't necessarily have to feel it right then. But many of you will. Well, I don't feel like I got anything because I didn't feel like I think I ought to. How would you know if you've never received it? You think you ought to. How, how would you know? See, all of that's flesh and all of it. Just get into the Word. Say, yes, sir, I believe that. How much more should your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? All right. Just do this. Just, just, just follow me. Father, I'm asking you. Jesus is my Lord and Savior, and He said I could do this. I'm asking you to fill me right now with your precious Holy Spirit. I receive right now in Jesus' name. Now, now watch me. I am receiving. I am receiving. I'm going to breathe just as deep as I can. I am receiving your Holy Spirit coming inside of me. You have to make the noise. It's your voice. And I believe I receive. Why? Because Jesus said I would. That, 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 that's, that's, that's the bottom line right there. He said I would. Hallelujah. Now just, just follow me again. Father, I receive in the name of Jesus. Yeah, glory to God. Go on, baby. Dance all around the room. Yeah, but I don't understand anything I, I'm saying. You ain't talking to yourself. You're talking to the Father. I remember when our children were little and I'd come in there and, and, and then one of them said, and I said, Gloria, what did she say? She said that <laughs> Gloria could understand her. I couldn't. But see, Gloria spent time with those children all day, every day. She understood what they said. Your heavenly father understands if it's nothing but But don't just stay it. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Move in it. Move in it. Go ahead. Hallelujah. I'll be back in a minute. Life can be stressful. Worry can weigh you down. But let not your heart be troubled. God is there for you. Keep fear out of your heart with the Living Free from Worry Package. Overcome the challenges of life with the power of the Holy Spirit and God's Word with Kenneth Copeland's teaching series, Let Not Your Heart Be Troubled. Don't wring your hands about what you see around you. Establish your heart in faith and depend on the Holy Spirit to keep you in a place of peace. Break the worry habit once and for all with practical insights from Kenneth Copeland in his mini book, Break the Chain of Worry, The Joy of Living a Carefree Life. Don't be overwhelmed by the news media. Take your stand of faith and hold your ground. This is the information you need for today. Focus on God's promises and choose to live worry-free. Request the Living Free From Worry Package, this week's free TV offer from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Call 01-225-787-310 or go to kcm.org.uk forward slash TV special. Break the worry habit. Learn to use the Word of God and take authority over thoughts of worry. This free offer is good for 30 days. Postage charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. Now let's look back here in the 12th chapter concerning spiritual gifts, brethren. I would not have you ignorant. 
Now, these are the nine ministry gifts. Th these are manifestations of the Holy Spirit in supernatural ministry. And part of that supernatural ministry, there is the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, another special faith, another gifts of healings, to another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, and to another different kinds of tongues and to another interpretation of tongues. That's not, that's not your, your, your private devotional life where you're speaking not unto men but unto God. This is a manifestation of the Holy Spirit as the Spirit wills where He is speaking to men through you or me or someone else. That's totally different than your, your daily devotional life praying in other tongues. So now if you follow that, you come down to the place where um, talking about the body of Christ, verse 27, now you are the member of the members of the body of Christ, members in particular. God has set some in the church. First apostles, that's a ministry gift. Uh, secondly, prophets, that's a ministry gift. Thirdly, teachers, that's a ministry gift. After that, miracles, that's a gift of the Spirit. Gifts of healings, that's a ministry, we just read that. Helps government diversities of tongues. Are all apostles? Of course not. Are all prophets? No. Are all teachers? No. Do all workers of miracles do have all the gifts of healings? Do all speak with tongues? Well, see there, Brother Copeland, not everybody. No, 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 no. That's talking about the ministry gift of tongues. That's not talking about, you. that's plain enough. Now, Father, I pray over all of this radio and television audience. They're experiencing new places in you. And I thank you. I'm, I'm, I, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus to give them further encouragement and, and strengthen them in the Spirit. Bring the joy of the Lord like they've never known it before. I want to send you this little book, free and postpaid. Go to kcm.org. This information in what's happened to you when you got born again. And oh, it's just good stuff. Join me again tomorrow. Don't miss this tomorrow now. Uh, I, hey, <laughs> glory to God. Amen. Are you with me? Oh, yeah. Praise God. Until then, remember this. Jesus is Lord. Learn more about your new life in Christ. Email us today at partners at kcm.org.uk and request your free salvation package.